Welcome to Inveris Training Solutions. Today we're gonna to be going over our FATS 100P. The FATS 100P by Inveris is our most lightweight and portable system out there on the market. As you can see the components right here, they consist of a high speed uh, gaming laptop, if you will, a projector HD, and our hit detection camera. Hit detection camera is what's actually used to track the laser on every single weapon. Then we have your sound subsystem, which consists of these two speakers that you can put either at the station or back behind the screen. Very simple, the FATS 100P allows you to set up in about 15 minutes and tear down in about less than 10 for the ease of movement and transportation. It comes in two small Pelican cases, so if you wanna move it from station to station, wherever you're conducting your training, you can do so fairly simple. So the FATS 100P is designed to be lightweight and portable. Again, consisting of just a laptop, your projector, your hit detection camera, and your speakers allows you to set it up anywhere in any classroom. All you need is at least a 10 by 20 to be able to operate it in. A little bit more comfortable, you want at least 13 by 20 to 25 feet in depth and a clear room just to set up. As you can see here, we have it projected onto a screen. You can have either one of our screens that comes with it or just project onto a plain light colored wall. It works exactly the same and helps out as far as being movable in and out of a classroom, if you will, if that's all you have for training space. One of the first things that we're gonna be going over is our marksmanship application. So we have multiple applications, marksmanship and use of force as far as your de-escalation training videos. We're gonna show you how it transitions from one to the other, obviously first learning how to employ your weapon systems in a virtual marksmanship range. So therefore you hone down on the actual firearms fundamentals and your proficiency in your marksmanship. As you can see here, we have our 3D range. One thing that we can do on a 3D range is we can replicate any distance there is all the way up to 1900 meters. Our Blue Fire Weapons, if you watch one of our Blue Fire Weapons Simulator videos, goes in detail as to the capabilities of these Blue Fire Weapons. Our systems, for example, this Glock 17 here is a simulator that communicates wirely with the computer. It has ballistics incorporated into it, so it knows the actual trajectory of, for example, this nine millimeter round that's in here. So at a distance of 20 meters, it's gonna work exactly the same way as it does in real life. So if I start pushing that target out to 100, 200, 500 meters, it's gonna do the same exact thing. I put a target out there. Obviously a nine mil round is not gonna hit that far. Therefore, it'll have its ballistic drop. Same, same as in real life. That'll conduct it here in the simulator. I'm gonna show a grouping. It's gonna be a three round exercise. And we're gonna go into this, looking at the analytics and the feedback that you can get from it. Again, the student has to load and make ready like he would a real live weapon. So load, make ready. So three shots. I did three common mistakes that students do on the range to show you how the system will outline exactly what they're doing wrong. So if you look at the screen, you'll be able to see the analytics in the instructor control station. As you can see here, you're gonna notate there's several different colors on the screen. Green, the green line, is gonna be your trace five seconds prior to the shot breaking. So the minute you come on paper or come on target, the minute you find your target, you align your sights and or lack thereof, the system will outline it for you. Once you start squeezing on that trigger, any movement thereafter, that line will turn pink, showing two tenths of a second prior to that shot break exactly what you did wrong. Whether you had too much finger in the trigger and jerked it left or right, or you anticipated the shot and went all the way straight down. So here we'll show you here in a second, we'll play it. You'll also see a blue line. The blue line is two seconds after the shot, which is more or less your recoil management and or your follow through. So we'll go ahead and press play. We'll actually slow it down for you. So go ahead and select slow. Press play again. You'll see the green come onto the target. He's circling around, aligning his sights. Slow, steady squeeze and continue to fire. We'll see our second shot here in a second. So the common mistake here was looking over the sights and staring at the target instead of your side alignment side picture. Therefore, you see the green, instead of staying in the center, it starts drifting up and around into a figure eight all the way up on the chest of that target. And shot number three, again, looking over the sights, dancing around. In this case, the student actually anticipated the recoil 
and muzzled that weapon down. Therefore, you see that long pink line going all the way down towards the bottom of the target. Now an instructor knows, hey, this student has a mistake or an issue with his anticipation of recoil because the system is telling us exactly what he's doing wrong and we can manage that. If he had pink left or right, it'll tell us that he's squeezing the trigger left or right. If that green line is all over the place, we have to work on a side alignment site picture. That's just exactly how easy the Inveris Training Solutions FATS 100P and our marksmanship application assist instructors in identifying how that student is shooting, what he is doing wrong and or what he is doing right and continue forward as far as marksmanship goes. One of the things that we can do on here, if you can run that one more time, we can run any course of fire that exists in real life. So we'll start practicing and zero and grouping exercises. Then we can move on to actual ranges, moving targets, pop-up targets. We can even replicate your qualification courses. So if you have a seven yard uh, shoot, you have a 15, 20, 25 yards, we can simulate each and every one of those. The timing and the exposure of those targets and how many rounds are fired. We can even score them and give you a grand total score at the end to know if you passed and or failed. So again, what we'll show here now is the fact that we can control what this weapon does as far as firing, right? So we'll go into this loading, make ready. The student doesn't know, but at any point in time, the instructor can actually jam and or create a malfunction onto the weapon system. So I don't know when the instructor is going to jam me, but it's going to go on forward. Click. Misfire, misfire, misfire. Slap that magazine, rack that slide. Puts the weapon back in the battery. You can continue fire. As you saw, this was a three round course of fire. Therefore, this weapon locked back to the rear. The weapon is smart. It knows exactly the round count needed for each course of fire. That's if the instructor authored it that way. So for example, this was three rounds, locks back. I can drop that magazine, pull out a fresh magazine, use a slide stop to release it and or release it manually by moving the slide to the rear. That just goes to show you the capabilities that we can sit here and practice firing fundamentals, reloading, malfunctions as far as tapping, racking, and put that weapon back in the battery to continue to fire. So when it comes to the M4, we can do the exact same thing. The weapon load, make ready exactly the same. We can actually use any type of holographic or optic to put on this weapon, zero it, whether you use some type of aim point, whether it's some type of, again, holographic, trigicon, anything like that, we can put on a system, we can zero it, and you can fire exactly the same way you do in real life. One of the neat things that we can do, because our weapon systems are constantly tracking the laser, we can actually turn on the point of aim. So if you can see the point of aim that that student has, whether he's at the target, whether he's down at the dirt, and we can identify. You can obviously still see these things on the instructor screen as well. So one of the other neat things that I can do is I can actually show the point of impact. So go ahead and show point of impact. At this distance, it's showing that where I'm aiming is where I'm gonna hit. But obviously if I start pushing that target out farther, specifically with a rifle, it'll start shifting that point of aim, point of impact. One of the things that we'll go over is the environmental factors that I can change. So we have your atmosphere. We have clear haze, fog, smoke, dust, rain, snow, hail, and sleet. We can change the visibility on there. We can change the cloud coverage, your altitude, humidity, air temperature, time of day, your moonlighting, your wind, which direction it originates from. Let's say an example, three o'clock wind with a speed of 10 miles an hour. All right, we can even change the direction and speed which it varies. All of this will affect the ballistics of that weapon. Obviously at 20 yards or 20 meters, you're not gonna see that much effect, but when you start pushing that distance or that target out to 100, 200, 300 yards, that wind will start shifting the impact of that round. As you can see here, you can see the wind shifting the snow from right to left. Again, accuracy, ballistics, the replication in real life, students can start practicing their wind holds or whatever the case have it by practicing in simulation. One of the other things that we can do is on your moving targets, we also have a lead point that shows you on the target where that student needs to lead the target in order to hit it at that distance and that speed. So if you can see on the screen right now, it should show you that this weapon currently is no magazine inserted, slides forward, chambers empty. If I were to insert a magazine, you should see 10 rounds in that magazine 
Again, nothing in the chamber, slides forward. If I were to move that slide to the rear and hold it, it should still say chamber is empty because the slide is to the rear. Now in real life, if I were to rock that slide forward, it will load around. Same thing does in the software here on the FATS 100P. So there is nine in the magazine, one in the pipe. If the student were to rack that slide again, just like you would in real life, it would expel that live round. It does the same thing in the simulator. As many times that you sit here and rack it back, it will keep discounting those rounds out of the weapon. Therefore, you have obviously less rounds left, just like you do in real life. Our FATS 100P also has marksmanship authoring, which is also incorporated throughout all of our projection-based system. This feature allows us to create any course of fire, as you see right here. We can pick a 25, 50 meter, or all the way out to a 1900 meter range, and you can create your own course of fire. In fact, any course of fire that exists in real life, you can replicate it as far as pop-up targets, moving targets, time targets, and so on and so forth. Our library has over 120 different targets from qualification to competition style targets to be able to create these on the system. It takes about anywhere from five, 20, 30 minutes, depending on how in-depth you go to create the course of fire, test it, switch over into marksmanship and actually shoot the course of fire and have the guys practice and or do some type of competitions. The system already comes also pre-authored with multiple either state or federal qualification courses to include skill builders. These are designed to allow you to be better, become more proficient in your accuracy and your speed. But again, if you wanna create your own and you have your pre-written ones that you like to do or run your guys through as far as practice goes, you can set it up on the system and be running in about 15 minutes or so, depending on how in-depth you get into it. So as I mentioned before, the FAST 100P has two applications. It has a marksmanship application that allows you to hone in on your weapons and firearms fundamentals and your precision. Now we're gonna get into the use of force side of it, right? We're gonna present you with multiple videos uh, via use of force application that allows you to go through your communication, your de-escalation training, and then overall your judgment on use of less lethal and or lethal force. As we go through it, the system is designed and has a ton of libraries as far as lessons learned from past experiences that are videos that we've recreated onto the system, like we're gonna play one here in a second, from officer involved to active shooters to demented persons to allow the full spectrum of those calls that you would get out on 911 issues out there on the street. So now we're gonna be going over the use of force application or your de-escalation scenarios. As you can see here, we're going into a scenario with an armed suspect in a domestic violence issue. We're gonna show you how the officers can communicate, try to de-escalate, and then if there's a reason to use lethal or less lethal force, we'll run those options. So if you don't mind, we'll go ahead and start one. You are responding to a frantic 911 call about a man assaulting a woman with a hammer. What's going on? Where's he at, man? Sir, come here for a second. Let me talk to you. Hey, what's in your hand? Come here. Let me talk to you. Hey, drop the hammer. Drop it. Hey, radio, start me some more units. I got a man armed with a, seems to be a hammer. He's going to be wearing blue jeans, white t-shirt. Be a middle-aged white male. Hey, bud. Drop it. Just drop the hammer for me. Listen, drop the kid. I understand that, my man. Just drop the hammer, please. Please drop the hammer. We can talk about this. Put it down. Put it down. Please. You don't have to hurt him, my man. Put the kid down. Put him down. Radio, be advised, shots fired. Suspect is down. Please start me an ambulance. So after the scenario ends, the system also has a data library where it can store the student's information, whether using his name, rank, or ID number, and it'll save all the data within that system as far as what he's trained on and how his outcomes were. So in marksmanship, it'll track all the courses of fire that he ran and all his scores towards the end of it. And you can go back and look at it by time and date. Same thing with use of force. You can choose to save or not save at the end of that scenario, and it'll save it under that student's name, rank, or ID. If not, you just don't save it, and you can continue forward with the next scenario. So quick overview. Again, the instructor has multiple branches that he can choose throughout the scenario. He can choose for the suspect to take a kid hostage. He can choose for him to run around the corner and be alone. Once the officer rounds that corner, then the instructor, again, has control 
of what happens, whether the suspect complies and puts the hammer down or whether he continues to argue with me verbally. Or third, he actually turns around and starts beating this kid with a hammer. And again, from a law enforcement perspective, I have to sit here and figure out and communicate and try to peacefully resolve the situation. Now, if it turns into a higher situation, more or less, then I have to take matters into my own hands and I have to deem what type of use of force I'm gonna use, whether it's lethal or less lethal in order to save this kid's life. So we're gonna watch the replay. During the replay, you're gonna get multiple things. Again, the angle, you're gonna get a trace. So if at any point in time, I pull out a pistol, a taser, a OC spray, it'll bring the trace as to where I was aiming throughout the entire scenario where I had that weapon up. Go ahead. You are responding to a frantic 911 call about a man assaulting a woman with a hammer. As you can start seeing my trace on the lower left side of the screen. Come on! I swear to God, if you don't leave, I'm gonna kill this kid. No. I'll bash his brains out. Go! This is not concerning you. This is a family man. It's my kid. Go! When and if I fire, you will see the shot placement and you will see a color code. Red is a lethal hit, green is a miss, and yellow would be a less lethal hit on the body. One of the things to note is the strength and power of that round, right? So if I were to fire, all those shots went to the upper torso of that suspect and took him down. If I were to fire a little bit lower on the torso around his center mass, the system will register that as a not only lethal hit on the suspect, but it'll also register it as an innocent hit on the child because obviously rounds can go through the body. As an officer, we need to be cognizant of where that round can end up. Obviously know your target and what lies beyond. So that is a lesson learned from this situation that if you fire and hit center mass, it can go through and potentially hit that student. Therefore, it's a training feature, right? If I, as an officer or a training officer, my student runs through this and gets it wrong, great. I want him to get it wrong here so that when he actually does it again, he gets it right, or when he gets out there in the real world, he doesn't make the same mistake. Therefore, we see shots all to the top of the body, suspect down, we're good to go. We can continue moving forward as far as radio calls, uh, calling for emergency assistance, and so on and so forth. We can debrief it, watch the replay, watch the shot placement, move on to the next scenario. If the child wasn't there in this case, I had the option to actually switch from lethal to less lethal if I had either a partner or felt comfortable that I had enough distance and or time to actually deploy the taser. You can deploy the taser and also take that suspect down. So it's not always a shoot, don't shoot scenario. It's a what if and what should I use as far as use of force, whether it's lethal or less lethal. The instructor has the ability to de-escalate or escalate the scenario or the suspect actions as he's going through it. This will allow that officer to keep and continue engaging verbally and or force that student to use a lethal or less lethal option to find a peaceful resolve.